is a second try. I did this video this morning of my little tube of paint there and I used my Nikon camera, cool pick, and all I got was a very out of focus video. So we're going to try it again. Uh, Although my best stick was in that first. But anyway, we'll, we'll try it again and uh, uh, see how it goes. Anyway, um, I use this pencil sharpener. It's uh, by Cum, K-U-M, uh, and uh, it's a long point. And so I, I don't get a real stubby, like a nice long point like that. And... Uh, it has two has has two places here. The first one kind of peels peels back the uh, the wood, and then the second one takes it into a point. So you have to kind of get used to it, otherwise it makes an odd point. But anyway, it works really nice, and I I really like it. The other thing that I like a lot is my Tombow. Uh, a mono zero eraser and it has a little tiny eraser on the end. It's very, very cool. So, uh, I'm going to try and do another drawing this morning. Not sure what I'm going to do it up off. Oftentimes when I do it, I just grab something, uh, off, uh, off the table or off my workbench, which actually there's this, this little thing. Let's, I don't know. Nope. Don't think that's going to work. Do you? Nope. Let's not do that one. Ah, uh, blah, 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 blah. Ooh, yeah. Talk about a paintbrush. How about this one? I bought this years and years and years ago and it was expensive paintbrush. I'd hate to see what it costs today. Anyway, uh, let's see what I can do here. Let's see if I'm in the, yeah, sort of I'm in there. So I've just put it in time lapse and I'm laying out my kind of guidelines. And one of the things that I've been trying to do is making a round object look round when I draw it so I'm and the hardest part is getting the curved line to feel right I'm not really sure how I'm going to say that but anyway right now I'm getting the furl in and trying to get those those ovals right and as I'm showing that I'm trying to get that but as I get closer, this actually should not be as, as big a curve as because I'm more over the top, getting closer to being over the top of it. So I, it would let be less of a curve than the one near the brush. So, and then that's, uh, I'm put it in the little neural, I guess that's the right word, um, that crimps the handle on. And um, and then it the metal flares out a little bit so that um, the uh, handle can fit inside. So anyway, so I'm really a very slow drawer, and I really had to put this into time lapse because it took forever. So I'm just doing some corrections now and uh, starting in on uh, the beginning shading of the black furl. Uh, I'm trying to keep the shape as I go around into that indent indentation. Um, and what I like to do here is I like to put in a beginning, an overall beginning shading and then I will go and darken areas so 
I just noticed, of course I didn't notice while I was filming, that I have a shadow. <laughs> I need to get me a, a light so I have cross shadowing. Now there's really no excuse for me on this shadowing. I have a degree in theater, in technical theater no less, so I should know better. But I didn't notice it until I'm editing this video. But anyway, I'm trying to get the beginnings of the darks and grays in the furl. And I notice here that in the video you can't really see the difference, the different um, values going around. You just have to take my word for it. And um, now there's a highlight that goes right where I'm do, doing it. And um, of course, there's a lesson to be learned here. I need to look more often at the object that I'm drawing. I have a tendency to just kind of look and then draw. And then not and and then by the time I think of looking back, I've made a mistake. So that's one of my one of my things that I want to work on is continually looking back at the objects that I'm drawing, not just every once in a while, but continually looking up and then looking back and drawing and then looking up and then looking back and drawing. So here there's a really strong highlight going around on the underside. I have a window in back of me um, that is that is throwing a, a secondary light. Actually I have lights over me, I have a light in back of me, and I probably have a very l light light I'm not sure that's ridiculous. But anyway, off off of my right shoulder. So I'm not setting myself up for easy rendering. Um, so I have to kind of make judgments and try to do, well, I actually doing a two source, light source, one above and one behind me. Um, now, now that I see the um, the hairs of the brush, I have made it's not symmetrical. Yep, it's not symmetrical, and I didn't catch it. Oh well, that's what daily drawing is all about. These are not high finished renderings. These are supposed to be sketches that do not take you very long but as a kind of a morning warm-up for your uh, f for your day of doing artwork or doing other things. So here I'm starting to put in the, the cast shadow. Um, that's always a, a helpful thing to do uh, to get that in there because what it does is it, it helps it sit off off the table and it makes a drawing not look flat. It helps get it curvilinear. So here I'm putting it in um, and I'm noticing that there's instead of having a reflective light right at the edge of the actual furl the furl is casting a light, a reflective light, onto the piece of paper. And so it's getting light before it goes into the furl. Um, for the longest time I didn't see it and then when I did it was like, oh, look at that. It's, it's a reflective light. So I'm trying to get that and, and because the furl is a shiny metal, it would do that, and even even the um, the bristles, which are a brown, uh, kind of a reddish brown. There was a reflective light of reddish brown onto the paper. So here here I'm going in and 
getting the darker core and I and I'm putting in a somewhat of a of a light on the other side of the furl I'm darkening areas and here I'm erasing I really don't like outlines and I've got them here but I'm trying to take some of those some of those lines out and have them show as highlights and shadows rather than a line um, now I'm going in and toning the um, the highlight there on on the side and taking that down it was certainly too bright and I'm still ignoring that the um, the bristles are not symmetrical and so um, hindsight <laughs> hindsight is always really good and it's a good idea uh, to to uh, uh, kind of look at your drawings the next day and you can see mistakes or as in this well actually this is I did this yesterday so look at it the next day and go why didn't you see that? It's right there. It's hit, hitting you in the face that it's wrong. And in fact, there is a place where I didn't even draw the the um, the brush hairs underneath, and it looks like somebody came along and took a big bite out of it. So anyway, so here I'm taking the smudge tool there is a name for this tool and I have to look it up because I keep using it and I do not have I don't know the name of it I've heard the name but I can't remember it so actually I'm going in and and um, adjust kind of blurring the edges uh, of the shadow. Now I'm going to come in here and do some highlights to try to get it to feel a little bit more like metal because right now it really doesn't feel like metal. Um, so of course if I could draw a straight line that would help. So what this is gouache what I'm using and it's picking up because it's water based it's picking up some of the um, graphite so I'm somewhat letting it dry and then going over it again. Now I could have used a gel point, a gel pen, and I may still go in and do that because that certainly would sit on top and be be a highlight. But you don't want to get too um, garish with the highlights. Um, so anyway, I think that I'm almost done. This is a part of my daily sketch practice. If you enjoyed this, please subscribe to my channel. I will be putting one to two of these up a week. Um, if you have any comments, please comment below. I hope you have a wonderful day. See ya!